Hi and welcome back. In the first video in this series, the last video, we took a look at this CSS navigation bar that we're going to go ahead and create. So now let's go ahead and begin to create the HTML and the CSS to lay this out. And it's really not all that difficult. I'm going to come into my index.html file here. And this is my working copy. And you can see the navigation bar that I've got set up here. Again, it's a simple unordered list with four individual list items inside of it. Again, it's important to remember we've got an LI there and we've got an A there. And that the A is inside of the LI. So any graphic that we apply to the A will cover up whatever's been applied to the LI. Now, before we start writing the CSS, I need to add some class styles to these elements so I can uniquely target them. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a class style for my outer container, my UL, and I'm just going to call it Menu. And then I'm going to go ahead and create individual class styles for each one of my list items. So we've got Home and About, and we've got product, or we've got Services, and finally contact. Save that and got everything spelled right there so we've created five class styles. Now I'm going to go ahead and come into my CSS here. Now again remember we're going to have two different images on every button. We're going to have an image for the LI and we're going to have an image for the A. Since the A is inside of the LI tag or I should say since the A tag is inside of the L tag, whatever we attach to the A tag is normally going to be shown. Whatever is attached to the LI tag is going to be covered up with it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a style first off for the home button. And you can see here, I've got, whoops, I forgot my closing bracket there. I've gone ahead and set up just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that and just paste it down three more times. So now I've got something for about services and contact. And our final one there, contact. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to apply the background images to each one of these elements. So I'm going to go ahead and do background dash image and I'm going to browse and again right now I'm on an LI tag not an A tag so I need to find the home hover button and there it is right there and then I'm going to go ahead and close that off and actually what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and copy that and I'm just going to paste it three more times in here so that all I have to do is change just one word. There we go. I'll save that. Now when we look at this in design view, and actually i got to jump out of live view here, in and out of it, you're going to see, I see the hover graphic. Now obviously this doesn't look anything like what we're um, going for, but you can start to see the buttons appear. I'm going to come back into code view here and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the A tag, background image, and I'm going to browse for the off state graphic because this is on the A tag so we want it on top. And there it is, click OK and enter it on in, type a semicolon at the end, and now I'm ready just to copy and paste that style into our design. And then again, all I've got to do is change the names of the buttons. Oops, got to make sure I get it right there. So there we go, we've got two images attached to each button, one on the LI, and one on the A tag. And again, if I save that and go into design view, you can kind of start to see this take shape, but not really. So the next thing we need to go ahead and do is format the way the individual items are going to look. Now, if you've used a CSS reset, some of this is not going to be necessary. I'm going to go ahead and begin to format the container 
and all the list items that are inside of the container. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove any padding margin um, that happens to be on there. I could also do border if I wanted to. And then I'm going to go ahead and, oops, I forgot one other thing. I want to make sure that the list style type is none here. There we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and apply two more properties. And these are properties that we really um, need. We need to float each one of these items over to the left. And actually, let's go ahead and just save that there and take a look and see what this did to our design. And you can start to see that the buttons are starting to take form. They're flowing to the left of each one. And you can see the gray of the button on the background of each one of these. And you can even see a little bit of the white of the writing underneath surfaces. If I come back into my code view, I want to space these buttons out just a little bit. And you'll see a little bit of space in between there. So I'm going to go ahead and say margin right is going to be 5 pixels. Save that. Look at design view. And you can see it's pushed them apart a little bit. Now, right now, the only thing that's giving the button shape is the actual text that I've placed in the button. So what we need to do is we need to format that anchor tag to give this some shape. So again, I'm going to come in here to code view, and I want to format both the visited and the link property. So I'm going to go ahead and do menu, LIA link, and then again, menu container, LIA visited. And I'm going to go ahead and set the first property to display block because we want to be able to apply width and height to these different elements. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is specify the height, which is going to be consistent for each button you know, in the navigation bar. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is 30 pixels. Okay. And we want to specify the width of each one of the buttons. In this case, I've gone ahead and made all the buttons 100 pixels wide. So that's going to be kind of easy. Oops. So 100px there. And we'll just go ahead and copy that and paste it on in. Whoops. Don't need to do it for the A tags. Just need to do it for the list items. Finally, this one right down here. Yeah, a lot of extra space in there. We'll save that. And we'll go ahead and take a look at design view here. And now you can see the off-state graphics behind there. You can still see the text links, but you can also see the graphics. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and have the hover effect. And we're going to get rid of these text links.